Welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on fundamentals of food process engineering. Today we will start a new chapter on mechanical separation techniques. We know that in uh, food processing different phase of material or different uh, kind of material we need to separate for example, sometime the liquid and gases need to be separated, sometime uh, liquid and vapor need to be separated or sometime different liquid liquid samples need to be separated and uh, all these separations are done based on certain principle for example, uh, diffusional mechanism, molecular uh, diffusion mechanism uh, or some uh, chemical uh, based on certain chemical parameter, but there are uh, certain uh, requirement also there in, in that case we use the mechanical means to separate different uh, size fractions or, or different uh, material. So, these kind of uh, separation that we perform by uh, uh, I mean that we, that we call the mechanical separation that is being done based on the physical parameter or physical properties of food. And those are also very important in certain cases we will see them eventually. So, that is why we will uh, start the topic of mechanical separation today. Separations are extremely important unit operation uh, basically in food and chemical this is very important. Most of the processing equipments are used to separate one phase or one material from the other. So, as I said that uh, when we use the diffusion that means, we want to separate in the molecular scale uh, that uh, is uh, may be for separation of the uh, gas and liquid or vapor and liquid etcetera. Okay. But mechanical separation these are applicable to heterogeneous mixture based on physical differences between them. That means, physical differences between the particles that we want to separate and what are those physical uh, difference may be they will be size, shape or density or surface property, surface charge, weightability all such may be the parameter uh, on which we want to separate by using uh, the mechanical uh, force to, to separate these particles. Classification of mechanical separation methods. Okay. So, uh, for classification of mechanical separation uh, we need to see based on selective barrier such as screen or filter cloth. Uh, we call it selective barrier because we fix the shape or size of that. So, that a particular fraction can pass through and all other can retain over there. So, filter cloth also or screen also we can select. Another is based on the difference in phase density alone. That means, the hydrostatic separator that when we use. So, that work based on the phase density difference between the two uh, two material or two different phases. Third one is based on the uh, fluid and particle mechanics. Also, we can perform the mechanical separation based on the surface or electrical characteristics of the particle. And based on all this above classification, mechanical separation can be categorized as screening, filtration centrifugation and sedimentation. So, we will see them uh, in a bit detail in our this particular class. So, first is screening. So, in screening uh, we mentioned about screening a bit when uh, we uh, dealt the different particle size analysis thing. So, uh, the, the different fraction, the different size of the particle, different mean size of the particle we have uh, calculated 
uh, for the for the size reduction and then for analysis of those different fraction we used a screen okay there are many method but screen is uh, one effective method so like that here also for mechanical separation according to the size alone we need screens standard screens range in mesh size from 4 to 400 mesh and woven metal screen with opening as small as 1 micrometer are commercially available. In screens, the particles drop through the opening by gravity, brush or centrifugal force. And coarse particle drop easily through the large opening, but with fine particles, the screen surface must be agitated by shaking or gyratory or vibra vibrating motion. Otherwise, what happens those fine particle may clog the pores of the screens. Okay. So, uh, to separate to get a particular size fraction we can use a screen and the, the size opening or the mesh size of that screen can give us two fractions one is retained over the over the uh, screen and the other which is passed through the screen. Now, here of different types of uh, screens mainly used that is first one stationary and grizzlies. A grizzly is grid of parallel metal bars set in a inclined frame as we can see here the parallel metal bars are there those are set on an inclined uh, inclined frame from one side feed is entering and the undersides which is passing through the screen that is come from the uh, down section and the oversize is moving with the stream. The slope and the path of the material are generally parallel to the length of the bar. Slope is generally parallel to the length of the bar and the spacing between the two bars is 2 to 8 inch. They are very effective only with coarse free flowing solid containing few fine particles. So, grizzlies are not suitable for the fine particles they are uh, good at only handling the large size particles. Now, gyrating screens. So, gyrating screens in this case the casing and screens are gyrated in vertical plate about the horizontal axis by an eccentric uh, that is set halfway between the uh, feed point and the discharge okay. and the rate of gyration is again varies from uh, 600 to 1800 revolution per minute. Finer screens are gyrated at a feed end in a horizontal horizontal plane and the discharge end recipient uh, reciprocates, but not gyrate. So, gyratory, uh, uh, gyratory arrangement we have seen when we have discussed the different size reduction equipment. Here also gyrating screens are very uh, common where we can use to, uh, we can use this kind of screen to separate different fraction of material. Now, vibrating screen. So, this is another uh, uh, screen which can be vibrated horizontally or vertically. So, these screens are rapidly vibrated with small amplitude and are less likely to blind the blind that uh, gyrating screen. So, because of this vibration small amplitude vibration that we are providing the screens are less likely less likely to blind than the gyrating screen. So, the particle small particle will not clog or uh, fill the small fine particles in the in the screen. So, that is why it is beneficial compared to the gyrating screens. The vibration may be generated mechanically or electrically. Mechanical vibrations are usually transmitted from high speed eccentric to uh, casing of the unit and therefore, to the steeply inclined screens. So, generally the screens are a bit inclined to have a easy flow of the material. Electrical vibrations from uh, heavy duty solenoids are transmitted to the casing or uh, directly to the screens. So, thereby the casing will uh, vibrate with, with small magnitude. So, the first one the first figure 
is shows the heavy duty vertically gyrated uh, and the second one is the electrically uh, vibrated screens. Now, motion of screen can be of many types. Uh, the first uh, first one is the gyration in horizontal plane figure A, B is the gyration in vertical plane, C is the eccentric gyration. Okay. So, gyration at one end shaking at the other end, gyration at one end and shaking at the other end, D is shaking only and E is the mechanically vibrated screen and F is the electrically vibrated screen. So, all are the different arrangement of the screen that we can use based on uh, product to product or based on the efficiency. So, because inclination also is uh, the, the flow of, of the uh, grain forward direction, uh, gyration and shaking both uh, help in the uh, you know proper, proper screening and they prevent the clogging of the mesh. Now, what is mesh size? We are uh, since the last class we are we are talking about uh, 400 mesh, 20 mesh or, or 200 mesh like that. So, these are specification that we generally use for describing a particular kind of mesh. Simply mesh size indicate the number of opening per linear inch. As for example, 5 mesh means there are 5 number of openings per linear inch. Okay. A smaller mesh size indicate larger particle can pass through the mesh. That means, if I say that 4 uh, mesh size that means per inch only 4 uh, you know perforation or openings will be there and if I say 200 uh, mesh size that means the 200 openings will be there per inch length. So, obviously, that size fraction will be smaller one. Now, if uh, if size of the screen of opening is equal to O and the mass uh, and, and the um, and the uh, diameter mesh diameter is D, the percent of area opening is given by this equation that is percent area opening equal to 100 into O that is the size of screen opening O square divided by O plus D whole square. So, mesh diameter is D and size of screen opening is O. So, O square divided by O plus D square into 100 that gives us the percentage area opening. Now, material balance over screens. So, uh, as, as I mentioned that whenever we run some material through a particular size uh, uh, of the perforation of a screen. So, some material will definitely retain over the screen and some will pass through. Okay. So, if we want to uh, categorize that we can we can have three fraction one is the feed that is the size of the input that is coming on the on the screen and another is the oversize that is retained on the screen and the other is the undersize which is passed through the particular dimension or the particular mesh size of that screen. So, if we consider let us say F D and B are the mass flow rate of feet respectively overflow D and underflow B of the material. So, feed rate is F, overflow rate is D and underflow rate is B. Now, the mass fraction of material A into 3 streams are x f, x d and x b. Okay. So, let us say I am separating the mixture of A and B and the fraction of A in all 3 streams that is inlet stream or feed stream, overflow stream and underflow stream that I have categorized as uh, x f, x d and x b. Then material B if you want to uh, identify what will be the fraction of material B in all the 3 streams that will be 1 minus x f that is in the feed, then 1 minus x d that is in the overflow and 1 minus x b that is in the underflow. Because uh, all the overflow and underflow or, or in the feed the total fraction will remain 1. 
So, 1 minus x f 1 minus x d and 1 minus x b will be the mass fraction of the material b in the feed overflow and underflow. Now, according to the mass balance feed will be divided into or distributed into two sections overflow d and underflow b. So, f equal to d plus b. Now, applying material balance we can write for a suppose if you want to do first f into x f that is equal to d into x d plus b into x b. So, here the cumulative mass fraction uh, larger than a particular size d has been plotted uh, with d. So, this kind of uh, plot the cumulative mass distribution plot we have seen in the particle size reduction class also. So, here the undersize and the oversize and also the feed has been plotted. So, we can get that if the critical diameter dpc uh, we, we, we want to calculate that uh, for, for dpc if it is the uh, if it if it is the feed, so what will be the oversize sample and what is the undersize sample of that? So then, from both this equation that f equal to d plus b and f into x f equal to d into x d plus b into x b, what I can get is d by f equal to x f minus x b divided by x d minus x b. So, here overflow by feed we have uh, expressed. Similarly, we can express underflow by feed that is x d minus x f by x d minus x b. So, what is it? Overflow d minus feed that is equal to amount of fraction of a in feed x f minus amount of fraction in b uh, that is the underflow. So, x f minus x b divided by x d that is amount of fraction of a in the overflow minus amount of uh, that that is going in the underflow. Similarly, we can calculate b by f. Now, screen effectiveness this is the effectiveness of a screen is a measure of success of a screen in closely separating the material a and b. So, it has been ideally uh, separate a and b completely the size has been uh, defined in such a way. A common measure of screen effectiveness is the ratio of the oversized material A that is actually in the overflow to the amount of A entering with the feed. So, screen effectiveness or oversized material are given as follows. So, E A based on the uh, material A which is the oversized material D into X D that is the fraction of A that has gone into the uh, that has present in the overflow. So, d into x d divided by the, that was present in the feed. So, f into x f. Similarly, the screen effectiveness of undersized material is given as, well, uh, as follows E b that is equal to b into 1 minus x b that means the undersized fraction that has gone to the undersize divided by the undersized fraction present in feed. So, combining all those two uh, efficiency based on oversize and undersize we can write E equal to D into B into X D into 1 minus X B divided by F square that is feed rate square into X F into 1 minus X F. And again if you want to change the value of that D and B and replace with a uh, with a fraction. Uh, so, d by f and b by f has been replaced by this two uh, factor d by f and b by f. So, we are getting x f minus x b by x d minus x b multiplied with x d minus x f by x d minus x b. So, putting that into this equation we are getting an overall efficiency expression as E equal to x f minus x b into x d minus x f into x d into 1 minus x b divided by x d minus x b square into 1 minus x f into x f. So, this is the final expression of effectiveness screen effectiveness. Now, capacity and effectiveness screen efficiency is a measure of uh, as I said that how closely we can separate a and b 
and capacity of a screen is measured by the mass of material that can be fed per unit time to a unit area of the screen and capacity and effectiveness are opposing factor. In practice a reasonable balance between capacity and effectiveness is desired. The capacity of a screen is controlled by simply varying the rate of feed to the unit. So, that is how we can change the capacity. Effect of mesh size on capacity of the screen. The probability of passage of a particle through a screen depends upon the fraction of the total surface represented by screen opening. It depends upon the ratio of diameter of the particle to the width of an opening of the screen on the number of um, contact between the particle and the screen surface. So, many factors are there. First is the ratio of the diameter of the particle to the width of opening of the screen and on the number of contact between the particle and the screen surface. So, the size of the largest particle is just equal to the width of the screen opening which is dpc critical diameter the largest size uh, the largest particle and the number of opening per unit screen area is proportional to 1 by dpc square because we have uh, mentioned that the particle that has been retained uh, in a time and the uh, you know the uh, the number of opening per unit screen should be proportional to the uh, 1 by dp square. Okay. So, the, the particle size that has been retained on that that means it is having a, a bigger size uh, particle and perforation size or the screen mesh size is lower than that. So, mass of one particle is proportional to dp the linear dimension q because volume that is dp cube into uh, density. Therefore, the capacity capacity is again based on the area okay. and area uh, is here proportional to 1 by dp square. So, capacity with unit time of the screen will proportional to 1 by dpc square into dpc cube that means it will vary directly with the dpc that is the critical diameter which is the size just above just little above the uh, mesh opening size of a particular screen. Now, here one problem is given where a quartz mixture having the screen analysis shown in, uh, in the below table screen through a standard 10 mesh screen calculate the mesh uh, mass ratio of overflow underflow to the feed and overall effectiveness of the screen. Now, the similar kind of analysis you can do by any grain sample as well uh, any mixture of the grain particle uh, or, or the different size fraction you take and do the uh, you know sieve analysis in a similar way. We have taken this data from a book that is why uh, this distribution has been given on the quartz, but same principle we can use for food material or any ground floor distribution uh, as well. So, mesh size has been given and particle uh, diameter dp is given feed rate overflow rate and underflow rate is also given. Okay. Now, what we need to see we need to see the critical diameter what is the critical diameter. So, the cut point diameter is the mesh size diameter of the screen which is 1.651 mm. So, this has been taken from the uh, tabulated data for this screen that is 1.651 uh, this particular size for this particular set of screen that we have used we have calculated the x f x d and x b. So, d p size 1.651 for this size see the feed is 0 0.47 overflow is 0 0.85 and underflow is 0 0.195. Okay. So, we are expecting that maximum fraction of this should come in the overflow. So, if that happens once we have got this value of x f x d and x b the ratio of overflow to feed that is d by f will calculate and underflow to feed that is b by f that will calculate. So, that is coming respect, respectively 0 
0 divided uh, 0 0.420 and 0 0.58. Now, we will use the effectiveness formula which is overall effectiveness based on oversize and undersize and put all such values that is uh, value of the x f minus x b 0 0.47 minus 0 0.195 into x d minus x f that is 0 0.85 minus 0 0.47 into 1 minus x b that is 1 minus 0 0.195 into x d divided by x d minus x b square. So, 0 0.85 minus 0 0.195 square into um, this uh, into this factor 0 0.47 that is x f and 0 0.58 that is uh, the uh, value of the value of b by f. So, if we uh, just check in with the equation, this was our equation x f into 1 minus x f. So, that that thing we will just put it here all the values and then we can get the overall effectiveness of the uh, of the screen okay so this is how we can solve the uh, we can calculate the effectiveness of a screen and also we can uh, find out from what will be the oversize fraction and undersize fraction and capacity of the screen also so in the next class we will uh, move on to the uh, other uh, different mechanical separation techniques in this chapter. So, thank you.